This isn't just another how to make hemp milk video. This is probiotic rich fermented hemp milk. And let me tell you, I had so much fun making this video and you'll see why. Let's get started. First, let me show you how to make the hemp milk. Then we'll get into the lacto-fermentation part. For a one quart or liter jar, you'll need one half cup of hemp seeds, which is the same as hemp hearts. Then add three and a half cups of warm to the touch, non-chlorinated water. The warm water will help the fermentation speed. Place the hemp hearts and water in the blender. Next, add two tablespoons of honey. If you're not a honey person, you can use maple syrup instead. You must add honey or maple syrup to feed the probiotics, so they'll ferment fast and heartily. That part is not optional. However, adding one teaspoon of vanilla for extra flavor is optional. Blend it all together on the highest speed for 30 seconds. Next, you'll need a fine mesh nut milk bag. A cheesecloth won't work to strain. With your hands, work the hemp milk through the bag. I did try using one of these types of strainers and it allowed for quite a bit more sediment to come through. You can see the little dark specks here. However, just like with orange juice, to pulp or not to pulp is really just about personal preference. So strain the hemp milk to your liking. If you wanna drink this delicious hemp milk, skipping the fermentation, you're done here. It's ready now for immediate use. But you probably clicked into this video because you want to see how to ferment it. Good choice. Pour the strained hemp milk into the jar. Next, pull out a capsule of your probiotic. For this quart size jar or liter size, add a quarter of a capsule to one half capsule. This is plenty. You don't need to use a full one. The fermentation will multiply the probiotic numbers to uber billions, trillions. <laughs> you like that technical term, uber billions, uber trillions? So give it a good shake to incorporate the probiotics. An exciting fermentation experiment is coming up, so don't go anywhere. First, a side note on the probiotics. Probiotic supplements are measured by CFUs, colony forming units. The number you see on your bottle is measured in these CFUs. Here are two probiotics I use in my household. This is a shelf stable. It's rated at 100 billion CFU per single capsule. This is a refrigerator probiotic and its CFU is 85 billion per three capsules, which really means about 28 billion per single capsule. Obviously, one is much stronger than the other. So I would use a little less of the stronger capsule and a little more of the lesser CFU capsule. The whole capsule isn't necessarily better because this little amount will ferment and multiply the CFUs substantially. And the bonus is you're stretching out the consumption of the bottle by doing fermentations like these, which saves you money. Look at my capsules. Many of them are partially empty because I do a lot of ferments just like this using a little bit of capsule as a starter. Next on the probiotic note is how many strains are included in the probiotic formula. Some only have one strain or just a handful. Others like the Garden of Life brand that I use, they have 32 strains. Each strain has its own special functions, so to speak. They don't do the exact same thing in the exact same place in your body. For me, my thought is the broader the spectrum, the better. Okay, with that aside, let's ferment this hemp milk. This is my latest kitchen toy I've been using with ferments. It's a digital pH reader. For the past decade, I went by smell, taste, and experience to gauge my ferments. But now I have digital evidence of the fermentation. How does a pH meter determine fermentation? Probiotics are a genus strain of bacteria called lactobacillus. Hence, what we're doing here is a lacto-fermentation. In the fermenting process, the lactobacillus generate lactic acid. This acid drops the pH of the liquid or the brine. A successful ferment will have a pH of 4.5 or lower. The healthy acidity of the ferments is what causes that distinctive sour taste of the ferments. The stronger the fermentation, the more sour the taste. So watch this. 
I'm going to take a pH reading of this fresh batch of hemp milk we just made. Although we just added the probiotic a minute ago, they have not had a chance to ferment, so the pH won't have dropped yet. This is a pre-fermentation pH reading. Right now, it seems to stabilize around this pH here. Tomorrow, we'll take another pH reading and see what happens. I'm gonna place a loose lid on the jar and keep it on the counter overnight. Here's another experiment I'm gonna throw in the mix. Did you watch my fermenting oats video? It's where I not only soaked oats, but also fermented them using the same probiotic capsule method we're doing here. Today, I wanna to soak the oats with this probiotic hemp milk and see what happens. I'm gonna use a half cup of oats and an equal one half cup of this fresh hemp milk that has the probiotic added, but remember, it's not yet fermented. And maybe just a splash extra for good eating tomorrow. Let's take a pH reading. And here's the pH. I'll let it stand overnight along the hemp milk and we'll test it again in the morning. P.S. I love this digital pH reader above and beyond pH strips because the strips could never give a precision reading like this meter can. It's so much fun if you're a fermenting nut like me. For comparison, I'm going to do another oat bowl, soaked only in water and no probiotic anything added. One half cup oats plus one half cup water and a little extra like the first oat bowl. Let's get the pH. It's the next day, and yes, the hemp milk will separate as you can see. All homemade plant milks do this because no anti-separating ingredients are added like with many of the store products. No prob, just give it a good shake and you've got the beautiful hemp milk back in seconds. Let's open it up and get the pH meter in. Whoa, look at how that pH dropped from yesterday. The probiotics are doing their job. This fermentation is a success. Okay, let's check that oatmeal. Again, a significant pH drop. We've got another fermenting success. I'm gonna drop some blueberries in and give this a taste test. I can tell how soft and tender these oats are before I'm even tasting them. They're perfect. Mmm, that is so good, perfect. It's the perfect texture, creamy, delicious. Mmm, I could eat this all day long. I actually wasn't expecting it to be so delicious. I mean, I have overnight oats all the time and berries and it's good, but the hemp milk, this is a level up from good. You have to do this. Let's check the water only oats. Okay, check that out. The soaked only oats did not drop below a 4.5 pH. So if you're an oat soaker and not an oat fermenter, there you go. Okay, so let's taste the hemp milk solo. It's good with a slight tang to it because of the lacto ferment. However, even if it doesn't have a slight tang to it, the pH meter will tell you if it fermented or not. I did let the hemp milk sit out for a few more days to test the best countertop ferment time in terms of flavor. By two days, it had developed more of a sour tang to it and by day three, it was way past tangy into the sour zone, too sour for pleasurable drinking in my opinion. So 24 hours seems to be the sweet spot for best flavor and as you saw with the pH meter, that's enough for a very healthy fermentation. To store, place the lid on tight and keep it in the refrigerator for up to three days. By day three, it's becoming quite sour, so it's best to start a fresh batch if you want more. A link to written instructions for this fermented hemp milk, as well as chapters, are provided in the description below. Here's what this fermenting homemade plant milk method will not work with. It will not work with flax or chia seeds because they'll become gelatinous. It will not work with oat milk because the oat milk will become thick and slimy. It will work, however, with homemade nut milks like almond, hazelnut, walnut, or soy, and it would probably work with rice milk as well. I don't know if it would work with store-bought plant milks due to their added ingredients and processing procedures, but you know what to do. Get a liquid pH meter like the one I use here, link in the description below, and give it a try. Let me know how it goes in the comments section. And did you know that you can use the same technique to ferment water into a probiotic drink? Check out how to make my probiotic water video right here. This is my fermented oats video in case you missed it. And if you're curious about the nutritional profile of hemp seeds, check out this video right here. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye.